What is the meaning of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5? A lot of theologians and scholars are saying that these, uh, these scriptures and verses about the last days is not applying for today, which is kind of confusing to me. And that these scriptures and verses are only applying for back in the early Bible times. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 is also for today, people. So please do not be confused about what's happening biblically. Back then, Daniel gave uh, a prophecy on Nebuchadnezzar's statue, his dream. Daniel back then did not know that he was paving a way with the message of teaching about the last days. He had no understanding on what it meant. Actually, Daniel thought that the last days were then. Same with John, the revelator. He didn't understand until it was revealed by God. We have to understand uh, prophecy. We have to ask God for, for his wisdom so we can be able to understand what is happening here. The things that did go on was still prophecy as well. But we're talking about the last days. The last days are now. The last days are now. So just in case people want to Google and start looking into others, professional perspectives of these scriptures. I want you all to be careful because these people are liars. These people go off on their own terminology and scientific views of others and stuff like that. So, you know, you have to be careful on how to apply and what these meanings are in the Bible. I don't know and I don't understand why people don't want to go to God because these are God brother scriptures. Uh, these scriptures are Jesus' words. huh? So we have to go to God and ask God for his wisdom in order to discern the secrets and the mysteries of his Torah. Now, 2 Timothy, verse, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Let's go. You should know this. Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that can make them godly. Stay away. From people like that. That's with an exclamation point at the end. If you're not reading your Bible. So let's go through the meanings of this. Let's start with testing the church. We're going to talk about the church. Okay. Difficult times. Christians are the most persecuted people group in the world. Even now in America, if you are called, you will know that this applies to you. As a spirit begotten Christian, we are the most persecuted people in the world today. Which is giving us the meaning of living in difficult times. Lovers of self. Unfortunately, most Christians now look like the world, putting themselves and their families before others. Lovers of money. As Christians look more like the world, they also act like the world. Ask them to put all their money, put all the money that is in their wallet into the offering. Boastful, arrogant revilers. Just check out the social media of many Christians. Yeah, that's all you got to do. Just look at social media and you will see the arrogance and the boastful 
of these so-called churches. Disobedient to parents. Scarily, most Christians raise their children using the wisdom of the world rather than the wisdom of the Bible, resulting in Christians who always spare the rod, ungrateful, unholy, and unloving. Can you be a Christian and be ungrateful, unholy, and unloving? Look at the members of your nearest mega church. And it will be easy to find them. Inconsolable, malicious gossips. <laughs> I've met many Christians who are unforgiving and gossipers. Without self-control. Ask a Christian to fast for a day. How about pray for an hour? Or study the Bible for an hour? <laughs> Too hard. Can't do it. Zero discipline. A lot of so-called Christians I've met, know, known, have come across, will not do neither of these things for God. They won't fast. They won't pray. And they won't study their Bibles. This is a Christian without self-control. Brutal haters of good. Treacherous, reckless, and conceited. Christians hate those who disagree with them. They can be brutal in their thought, words, and deeds. Most Christians hate the idea of discipline, humility, meekness, and sacrifice. All good things. Many are thoughtless. Most are proud. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. How many Christians would rather go to a three-hour church service or a prayer meeting than to a movie or a ball game? Huh? Let's read that again. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. How many Christians would rather go to a three-hour church service or a prayer meeting than to a movie or a ball game. Let's not forget about clubbing. Who will show up at the club to get in free before the hours <laughs> and will leave the club until it's past close. Huh? Holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. A lot of people been wondering what this verse means. Again, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its powers. Meaning, most Christians more resemble the Pharisees. Huh? More Christians. Most Christians more resemble the Pharisees of Jesus' time than they resemble Jesus. I always call them out as Pharisees today. Jesus called them whitewashed tombs. Now, let's go with the, another example to break it down. Holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its powers. Also, in a clear meaning, everyone thinks they're good people and going to heaven. Though they want nothing to do with God. Who is in heaven. Ta-da. I've come across a lot. Of, I work with people like this. Holding to a form of godliness. Although they have denied his power. Everybody good people. One of the co-workers at my other job stated that he's a little young boy. But still this was his thinking. I had to clear it up. Before he got in trouble. He was, and like others, are thinking just because they are good citizens that they're going to heaven. That is not that process. That is not it. You're going to miss it. Everyone thinks they're good people and going to heaven, though they want nothing to do with God. They don't want to pray because they don't know how to pray. There's a lot of downfalls with people today. I don't know how to pray, so I don't pray. If you don't stop it. If you don't stop it. 
I don't want to fast because I'm tempted to do this and then the other. I got diabetes. I can't go without my cigarettes. I can't go without my coffee, so I'm not doing it. I don't want to read the Bible because I don't understand it. I don't want to read the Bible because I'm going to come across something that's going to hurt my mind and hurt my heart, and I'm going to feel bad about it and guilty that I read it because I still want to live a wicked life. I don't believe in God. But yet, these people think they're going to heaven. See, I made a video about how Ray Ray and Pookie get to heaven first. <laughs> Before the first fruits. You know, you, 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 can't, you can't be living a life of a Pharisee. The Pharisees were a big issue back in Jesus' time. They were the main ones living a shenanigan lifestyle and thought that they were going to have front row seat in heaven. And Yahuwah, through Jesus, Yeshua, told them, you're not going, you're not going to take part of the kingdom when you're living this type of lifestyle. People, 2 Timothy verses 1 through 5, chapter 3. I've done my best to break this down. You will not inherit the kingdom. You will not inherit the kingdom of God if you are living this type of lifestyle. I don't care how many times you go to a building church. I don't care how many times, and God don't care how many times you, Lord, 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 all out, speaking in fake tongues all throughout the corners of the building. God does not care about none of this fake, boastful look if you are not willing to stop living in wickedness and stop sinning, if you don't stop treating your neighbor in, in evil ways, and, and if you don't bat out to God, if you don't want to know God, you will not inherit nothing. Galatians chapter 5, 19 through 21. We're going to talk about this type of wicked lifestyle. Verse 19. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, decisions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like, meaning, etc., I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Huh? You will not inherit the kingdom of God. Anybody who believes in the dead, people who die, and you keep saying that Pookie and them is in heaven looking down at you, that is witchcraft. That's witchcraft. Anybody that celebrates the day of the dead is sorcerer witchcraft living. You cannot be living like that. When people die, their spirits go back to Yahuwah who gave it to them. Their shell is dead. When the resurrections come, that's what that is, resurrected, meaning that you have been brought back to life by God, Yahuwah, who will put the spirit back in you. But until that happens, that person is dead. That person is not looking down at you. That person is definitely not in heaven yet. And they're not watching you. They're not looking at you. They're not part of your downfall in life. They're not part of your up blessings in life. When a person die, they die. You don't die and live at the same time. Now, physically, you could be living and dead at the same time. Yes, your spirit could be dead, but your body is moving. 
that, that yeah that that's possible but if your body is dead your spirit has been returned to father let's get that straight people Sexual immorality. You cannot be living a gay and lesbian lifestyle. That's sexual immorality. You cannot be living a gay and lesbian lifestyle. You cannot be living a majne twa, whatever you want to call it. You cannot be living that type of lifestyle. You cannot be cheating on your husband or your wife. That is committing adultery. You cannot be shacking, meaning having sex. Before marriage, that is fornicating. All of those things are sexual immorality. If you cannot help yourself, if you cannot control yourself, go pray. If you don't want to pray, then this is meaning for you. You will not inherit the kingdom of God if you continue to choose to live your life like this. Period. Even watching porn, you cannot do that. You cannot be watching porn. You cannot be addicted to porn. You can't be doing none of that. That is sexual immorality. It's against God. Deparkery. You cannot be getting drunk. You can't be getting slouchy. You can't be at parties turning up and, and getting towed down and wasted and scummy. That's living in debauchery. You cannot do that. When you're drunk, you don't know where you're at. You don't know what you're doing. You kind of twist off in your spirit. You want to fight. You want to shoot. You want to kill. You want to cuss people out. You want to have sex out of marriage. You want to do all these shenanigans things because you're under the influence, which means in drunkenness, living a debauchery lifestyle. Those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Orgies. Is in here. You cannot be having orgies. It's against God. I don't care what uh, testing, fraternity, sorority you're trying to enter. You cannot be living a lifestyle of this. It's against God. Impurity, idolatry, hatred, discord, fists of rage. The discord is when you stir up strife, when you start drama, when you're gossiping, when you're spreading rumors, when you're spreading lies, when you're causing defamation. That's discord. It's drama living like. It's drama. You are a drama person when you stir up discord amongst your brethren. You cannot live a lifestyle of drama. You're going to reap what you sow. You will not inherit the kingdom of God when you live a life of discording. The acts of flesh are obvious. Again, sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry. You cannot be worshiping yourself. You can't be worshiping money. You can't be worshiping your cars and your clothes, your jewelry. You can't be worshiping these rappers you see on TV. You can't be worshiping drinking, smoking weed. You can't be worshiping none of this stuff of the world because your father is Satan when you do so. Idolatry is serving other gods other than Yahuwah. Witchcraft, all of that is against God. God, and like I said, it stays in here and the like, meaning, etc. Meaning, etc. Those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Proverbs 6 16 through 19. There are six things the Lord hates, seven. There are detestable to him. Hardy eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devices wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community hearty eyes is when someone look down at someone with conceit in their heart and their minds that's hearty eyes a lying tongue is when someone is comfortable without conscience of god lying willingly habitual or whatever a lying tongue is a lying person whether it's a blue lap 
white light, black light, orange light, gray light, rainbow light, lying tongue. It never states what color or what kind of light. A lying tongue is what you should not be doing. God hates a lying tongue. Hence that shed innocent blood. Someone who kills because they don't like them. Someone who robs someone and kill them just for the heck of it because they want their money. Innocent blood is what that is. It didn't say guilty, but it does state that shall not kill also in the, de uh, the Decalogue, which is the Ten Commandments. But we're on verse 17. Hands that shed innocent blood. Which could also be meaning a spirit begotten Christian who may be martyred. A heart that devises wicked schemes. Oh, a heart that devises wicked schemes. Someone who's out here plotting, planning against the righteous on what they should do against them to hurt their circumstances. Those who's plotting to, to get them fired. Those who's plotting to get them put out. Those who's plotting and, and to get them to not go as far as they want to go in life or whatnot. A heart that devices wicked schemes. These are people who do things against others without the conscience of God. And think it's funny. Think it's all fun and game. Oh, I've come across a lot of those. Feet that are quick to rush into evil. You may have people that want to plot against another person. Then you have Tony and Mary who may want to join in alone and be part of the wickedness that's from the count. That's why you have those that sit in on interrogation that never knew that they would be in there because they made a poor judgment decision by riding along with Pookie and Ray Ray to go rob someone. To go set somebody up and steal something from them. To go shoot the house up. Go rob a bank. Want to fight somebody. Yeah, that's feet that are quick to rush into evil. Prime example about this young lady. Not no, not name calling, but a young lady that was on uh, First 48. Some group of girls went to go see another girl about some drama with some boy. Her friend happened to be over there and... One of the girls who came to see this girl had a gun. So they didn't get a chance to mingle with the girl who they went to go see. But her friend who had nothing to do with it, as they were leaving, she drove her car off. As everybody drove off, she drove her car over to them. Now imagine she had nothing to do with it. It was about her friend that got into it with the girls. So when she decided to go honk on horn and jump out and argue with them and fuss and fight, they was like, who is her? She ain't got nothing to do. We don't even know her. And they was arguing, and the girls came over there, and by her car started jumping on her, fighting her. And then the other girl pulled a gun out and blew her brains out. And all three of her kids in the back seat. The little boy said her brains splattered on his shoe. And she had nothing to do with it. Jumped right into it, drove right into the argument, got her face blew off. Because of something that was going on with her so-called friend or associate. This is a prime example. Feet that are quick to rush into evil drama seeking. A false witness who pours out lies. We know what that is. A person who want to be part of a, a, a workplace bullying who's willing to lie to be part of the clique and don't know what's going on, don't know, don't care, but just want to be part of the clique so they willing to lie against others, against the righteous. And this can be for any other uh, example. A false witness who pours out lies. This can also be for the police. <laughs> And a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Come on now. A person we just stated in about Galatians, about discord. A person who stirs up drama. We have a lot of those. We have a lot of Debo's. We have a lot of Shanaynays. A person who always going around starring stuff, gossiping, want to fight, want to fuss, a bully. We got those. We got that on the internet, cyber bullies. 
a person who stirs up conflict. We got people who like to start mess, who's messy, drama, gossipers. He say, she say, I ain't said, she said it. Rumors, 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 rumors. That's a person who stirs up conflict. The community could just be meaning any and everywhere. This is a person or people of drama. There are six things the Lord hates. Seven that are detestable to him. People, we have to understand all these things that I just mentioned. All of these things. Second Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 5. Galatians. Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 through 21. And Proverbs chapter 6 verses 16 through 19 are things that would get you thrown into the lake of fire. I understand that we may have some issues living these type of lifestyles. But in order to be forgiven, you have to repent, meaning that you are willing to make a bow face and live for God. You cannot repent and think that you want to continue living these type of lifestyles. Repenting means that you are begging God to forgive you because you are willing to not live like this. When you live like this, you are hurting people. You are hurting yourself by the end of the day. It may seem like you're getting away with it, but you're going to pay for it at the end. God bless.